Splinter Cell Conviction was released in 2010 as the latest in a long-running series. Splinter Cell. 2010 was the same year that Ubisoft released giants such as Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, a game that a lot of people would consider to be the peak of that franchise's identity. Splinter Cell Conviction, however, what is, uh... This game was received pretty damn poorly by Splinter Cell fans. For some reason, the reviews seem decently high for a game that most consider to be the lowest point in this franchise, and something Ubisoft had to actively course correct with Blacklist. I even did a tweet where I asked, what does everyone consider to be the worst Splinter Cell game? And apart from a few people naming random DS side entries that don't actually count, 99% of people agreed without prompt that their least favourite was Conviction. Sure, it's a relatively small sample size, but I still don't really know why these scores are so high. I remember being drawn to Splinter Cell Conviction originally as a kid because of the first gameplay they ever showed. If you remember it, it had a long-haired, fugitive Sam Fisher wandering through crowds, using people, creating distractions. It felt very next-gen, or what was next-gen at the time. It gave me very similar vibes to Assassin's Creed 1, in that it used the hardware and pushed it in a way that allowed for more dynamic crowd-based stealth, which, now that I think about about it could be the first sign of Ubisoft homogenizing all of their franchises and I just failed to see it. They changed Conviction though before it came out, uh, but I didn't know that. I bought the game hoping for what I saw in that first ever demo. I spent the whole thing thinking, okay, there will be a halfway point where we have a time skip and it introduces these crowd focus systems and the whole narrative shifts right up until the very end of the story. I thought the moment in the White House was the middle and then the game just ended, and I remember sitting there, so disappointed because I played the whole thing waiting for something they probably cut years ago and I just didn't know. The reason they seemingly made this change though was because that original demo was so far from what made Splinter Cell what it was that they attempted to course correct, but with the game's direction already solidified, I mean, the game is called fucking Conviction, there wasn't much they could change, and so they ended up losing all that made it feel different, but without gaining back everything they discarded from older entries, and so you're left with this middling, stuck-in-limbo game that doesn't have a great deal of depth to any of its mechanics. But I feel like in 2022 we're past that, right? None of it matters. Is this game actually good? Does it just fail to be a Splinter Cell? Is it strong in other areas? Let's absolutely take a look. Right, so, this game, uh, sucks. Conviction feels like one of the most shallow attempts to create a stealth experience, especially for a long-running and respected series like Splinter Cell. The game stretches from boring to downright hilarious, and it never goes beyond that. The game opens and essentially sets up all of its narrative components. Sam left third echelon, his daughter was killed, and he's sort of on the run, but looking into why his daughter was killed. It's a basic fugitive from the company you used to work for sort of story. A character called Grimm gets in contact early on, and through a series of events you discover that Sarah, Sam's daughter, is actually alive. It was all faked for secret reasons, to force Sam into doing things for third echelon that were in the previous game, but also because there was a mole and they wanted to hurt Sarah to get Sam to execute their plan of, like, killing the president, who's a woman, by the way. Nice one, Ubisoft. Point for you in the whole treating women like human beings department. <laughs> oh. Shit. Uh, business as usual, I guess. The story has a lot of flaws and becomes overly convoluted in a way that makes it all so funny, because what's happening is so messy and stupid, but all of the characters are taking it so seriously, it becomes an absolute comedy. You're lying. Why should I believe you? because my people have her. <laughs> they also do this thing as soon as the game opens that's like 72 hours later, and Grimm shoots Sam and you're meant to be like, whoa, I wonder why that happens, why did she turn on him? And straight away I was like, she doesn't turn on him. It's so obvious it's a plan where they're trying to pull the wool over the antagonist's eyes. You can't do a fake out like that, it's so obvious. And it was a fake out, obviously. It's so funny though because Grimm just starts speaking all evil because it has to seem really out of context for the audience when it's spliced into earlier scenes when you're not supposed to know what happens. And so, it sounds so fucking funny, she keeps doing these one-liners like, you're going to the Oval Office, Sam. You have to dress for the occasion. While he's fucking bleeding everywhere. Like, nobody but us and Sam can hear you. Why, what are you doing that for? Get up. <clears throat> Got an appointment with the president. Look, I could sit here all day and rip the story to shreds, but honestly, it's so boring and so half-baked that it's not worth me doing that. 
playing it, you can tell they didn't try very hard. There's no way they cared about making this compelling, it's just so completely bland, predictable, and melodramatic without earning an ounce of it, and it just boils down to being incredibly funny. What the fuck was that? On another note, why do we spend the whole damn chapter in fucking Iraq? There's no stealth, it's just third person shooting in Iraq, but we'll talk about this a bit more later. I'm gonna say something though, that I think every single person can agree with, and that is that Splinter Cell should always be, first and foremost, a stealth game. Right? This game really treads the line with that definition. Now I put the game on normal because that's just how I usually play games, although I definitely could have put this on hard because the game could probably be played with your fucking eyes closed. Wow. There is absolutely no planning, no strategy needed in this game whatsoever. Stealth is explained early on that if you're in the light, the screen goes colourful and enemies can see you. If you're in the shadows, it goes black and white and enemies can't see you, which means you're in stealth. The way it's explained as well using Sam's daughter is just ridiculous to me. When it's light, you can't see into a place that's dark. But when it's dark, you can see what's around you much better. So if there's monsters or bad people around, you can see them. And if you're in the dark, they can't see you. I can't see you either. It's just talking directly to the player. This conversation makes no actual sense as a real genuine conversation that two people would be having. When you're in the dark and your eyes get used to it, you can see all sorts of things around you really well. And then you can do stuff with them. Take a look at your mobile. You can see it really well, right? If there were monsters standing underneath it, because I can see it, maybe I could make it fall on them and they'd go away. <laughs> And with this system, they really mean it too. If you're in the shadows, nobody can see you. you got that loaded? What's your all the training paid off. I am dumbfounded that this is the way the game is made. But if you do somehow get caught, it literally doesn't matter. You can just kill the person who caught you and nobody knows that you're there. The AI is absolutely ludicrous. Better yet, you can simply just never engage with the stealth because the way the game is built heavily encourages not using stealth. There's cover everywhere, you have weapons caches full of automatic weapons, you have plenty of grenades, and enemies sort of clump together. It takes way more effort to try and make it a stealth experience than it does just sit on a window ledge and shoot everyone from a hanging position. Why would I engage with the system that actively doesn't encourage me when I can just do stupid shit like this? I felt constantly like I'd be able to walk into a room, hit it with an EMP, and then just hand-to-hand -hand take down every single enemy in there with absolute ease. It was so much more efficient to do that than slow slowly hunting them as they separate. A good stealth game doesn't let you do that, there isn't another alternative. Look at Batman Arkham, you can't just hop down and start fighting or get within range or effectively make enemies blind, you have to stalk, take down and stick to the shadows. Batman isn't even a true pure stealth game, not like Hitman or the older Splinter Cell entries, which just shows how poor conviction is built. You can honestly do whatever you want when you enter a room. The game denies any sort of creativity and movement, it funnels you through areas. I wanted to maybe hop on this truck and get behind the enemies, but nope, you have to go through the big gate, which means I could distract everyone and slowly pick them off, or I could lob some grenades and be done with it. The game is restrictive, easily exploited, and with the auto-execute feature, some encounters in the late game are made an absolute cakewalk by having an auto-kill-everyone button. Sure, you have to do one hand-to-hand -hand takedown to use it, but 
that's not a tough requirement. I breeze through this game. No encounter, no room, no segment ever challenged me at all to use my brain, and it was always way easier to just brute force your way through every enemy encounter. And that's the thing with Conviction. It's way too concerned with trying to be Jason Bourne or James Bond rather than Splinter Cell. It often pushes you into combat scenarios. Like we said before, there's a whole chapter set in Iraq where you don't play as Sam, you play as his mate trying to save him, and it's just a bunch of really boring shootouts. Why am I firing like a crazy person in a Splinter Cell game? What, what is even happening here? You're always getting into shootouts, chase sequences. Why is he running like that? Fist fights and more shootouts. Wait. Throwing a human shield kills them? Why? Conviction really loves its interrogations. You get to do a few of them across the game where you finally get to a high priority target and you question them. I think after the first time, it sort of becomes funny because it's using them denying you information as an excuse at the power fantasy of inflicting pain on them and showing off their environmental interaction. Each one is pretty similar. You grab them, you ask them stuff, and then they go, go to hell and then you smack them around and then they tell you and then you ask them another question and they go if you think i'm telling you you got another thing coming and then you you smack them again it happens three or four times each interrogation and every interrogation is the exact same oh there's real reflections in that mirror, that's pretty cool. The one interrogation in the bathroom is cool, that's fun, but like, the fact the mechanic reoccurs makes it less and less interesting, and I take it less and less seriously every time it happens. If you ask nicely, I tell you. <laughs> There's really not much more to say on this game. I mean, the game doesn't give you much to go on either. It took me four hours to beat, and I know I say that I'm a sucker for short games, but it sort of goes without saying they have to be good, you know? I may try Blacklist someday as a follow-up to this video, although I don't own it, so I'll either have to get a second-hand copy from some dodgy bloke on eBay, or simply pirate the game, which Ubisoft are a big backer of, apparently. In conclusion, don't play this game. Like, actually, don't do it to yourself. Do, mm, anything else. Literally anything else. I played this so that you never have to. I've played so many games I've liked recently and made tons of videos on them, and I had to remind myself that bad games do in fact exist. It helps you appreciate the good stuff. But let me know what you think about Splinter Cell Conviction, because I have absolutely no idea whether this game is or isn't a divisive one. Is there a big cult following for it, or does everyone feel very similarly that it just sort of failed to hit the mark. I really don't know. I feel like because they never really went further down this route, or at least that's what I'm led to believe, Blacklist is sort of a course correction, that no one really vibed with it very much. Uh, at least not enough for them to ever continue down the same path that Conviction led them. I don't really know. Also, this is a totally new camera angle for the ending of this video. Normally, the camera's over here, but currently we're over here. I think it frames the background a little bit better. Um, and also, you get to see the shelf. You what do you think? Yeah, it's yeah. There's not a lot going on. We have we have we have Bolt from the Disney film. We have a plastic. Um, what are they called again? From Destiny? Don't know. I got it in one of those loot crates when they used to sponsor me. This is a prized possession of mine, though. This is I sent got sent this from Tony when Ghost of Shin was coming out. A box, um, and they put the the special sake bottle in there. So. That's pretty cool, that one. I like that. I do plan on um, soon getting some more stuff for the shelves so it looks a bit better in the background. And if I keep this camera angle, it'll showcase it. I want to do a stream at some point where I just like, everyone can just recommend me stuff to buy and I'll just buy a ton of different stuff and we can put it on the shelves. There are more shelves, but you can't really see those ones. So, you know. Um, but if you want to join me for that, follow me on Twitch. I'm always streaming. It's a big part of what I do. Drop me a follow. Currently playing through Subnautica Below Zero. Then we'll move on with the rest of the Final Fantasy VII compilation. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Come join me. Have a chat. And, uh, yeah. Good gaming. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts. Uh, don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to sub. All their YouTube stuff. Um, my links are all in the description. And, uh... Hopefully you had a good time with this one. I got some other projects in the works, um, stuff for the Cybertron series of Transformers games. Um, I might touch on Blacklist. I'm working on a video for Subnautica Below Zero, and obviously there'll be a few big retrospectives at the end of the year, Witcher 1, Assassin's Creed 1, um, maybe Sleeping Dogs. I don't really know yet. I'm kind of pushing myself a little bit. And then obviously it's Lazboy content as well. Stream highlights, clips, my playthrough of Final Fantasy 7 and the subsequent entries into that series. That's, uh, that's about where we're at. Anyways, 
I won't keep you any longer. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for listening to my little ramble at the end there. Update anyone on bits and bobs. And I will see you all very, very soon for something new. Catch you later, everybody. Bye-bye.